everybody, it's Caitlin. Welcome back to Corona Chat. Um, today is Wednesday, May 13th, um, and this week on Corona Chat, we're sharing tips for staying safe as your community begins to reopen. So as we discussed on Monday, this is not because the coronavirus is gone, but rather because we're trying to figure out how to rebuild some semblance of life as normal, right, as this pandemic continues. And so each of us as individuals has to make good, smart decisions to help limit the spread of the virus to keep ourselves safe and those in our communities, right? So we're gonna spend one more night on masks um, because there do seem to be some important questions that are cropping up around masks and safety of mask use. And I wanna make sure that we kind of get through those questions. Um, so one concern that I've seen some people bringing up is whether wearing a mask will make it hard to breathe, right? This has really been fueled by some memes on social media warning about something called hypercapnia or carbon dioxide toxicity. And according to the meme, wearing a mask will trap the carbon dioxide that you breathe out and you will eventually suffocate. This is not true. Remember, the cloth and filters used to make masks have small pores in them, right? And these pores allow air in and out when we breathe. I mean, even a really non-porous mask, like an N95, allows air to pass through, which makes them safe to wear for long periods of time, even if they might be uncomfortable. So why does it sometimes feel so hard to breathe with an N95 respirator on, right? Like if you've ever um, painted a deck or something like that, you've probably noticed that it can be kind of hard to breathe. So the air that you're breathing inside of the mask may be more humid than what you're used to breathing. I live here in the South. Anybody who's been outside on a hot summer's day here knows what I mean when I say that humidity can make it really, really hard to breathe, right? So this can definitely be uncomfortable, but it doesn't mean that you will suffocate. Um, there's no need to try to cut a hole in your mask or lift it off your face every few minutes to make sure that you can take a deep breath of air. You don't have to hold your breath, well, nothing like that, right? One thing that can help is trying to make sure that you're breathing in and out through your nose rather than your mouth, right? The air in our noses tends to be a little less humid. And if you keep that humidity a little lower inside the mask, you may be a bit more comfortable. So hypercapnia due to wearing a face mask to protect you from, fake, from coronavirus, fake news. Um, another thing that people have pointed out is that wearing masks can make it really hard for people who are hard of hearing um, and who have to read lips to understand what someone's saying. And this is true. And for this reason, many companies have been um, producing clear face masks that allow for lip reading. And there's also tutorials online for creating transparent masks at home, right? So you've got kind of the mask and there's a little clear plastic part on the front so that somebody can see your lips. And these are totally a good thing. Um, but we also have other workarounds that we can use instead of exposing people to the virus, right? So you don't need to just take your mask off and then like shout at somebody, right? So most of us walk around with a digital device all of the time or nearly all of the time, right? So we can use our phones to type out messages and pass it over so that the person we're trying to communicate with can read our messages, right? And if we've got our hand sanitizer, our disinfecting wipes, we can kind of wipe stuff down as we're passing it back and forth, or even better, do what we've got to do to pass it back and forth. Then we each take some disinfecting gel or our wipe and we wash our hands off when we're done with the exchange, right? So if I have a business, right, and I need to have clients coming in, I can keep a notepad and a pen or a little whiteboard up at the desk with me, right? Um, you know, right at the cash register that I can use to communicate with a customer who might have a hard time understanding me when I have my mask on, right? We can also all try to speak a little bit louder and enunciate our words a little bit more clearly instead of just mumbling quietly in the corner, right? Um, and hey, maybe this is the time that we all learn a little bit of sign language so that we can at least understand basic requests and say things like, thank you, right? Um, okay, so finally, what about glasses, right? If I'm trying to juggle the mask and the glasses, like this can all be really tough. And you know, you can't see because the glasses are fogged and you're constantly taking them off to wipe them and that seems risky. And so what do you do? So one trick you may have seen is that um, if you wash your glasses with soap and water, um, the soap residue creates a film that makes it hard for the glasses to fog up. So what you wanna do is kind of wash your glasses with soap and water um, and then kind of shake off that excess water, you know, rinse them off, shake off that excess water, and then either let your glasses air dry or very gently wipe them with a, with a clean and soft cloth, right? And that soap residue, there'll be a little bit of that left and it will help to prevent the lenses from fogging, even though you'll still be able to see through, right? Um, another thing that can help is using a mask that has a bit of contouring around your nose. So with surgical masks, with N95 respirators, there's usually like a little bit of wire over the top of the mask 
um, that when you put the mask on, you press that wire down and it starts to kind of press the mask down around the bridge of your nose and it creates this little seal, right? Um, and if you're making a mask at home, you can replicate this by sewing a pipe cleaner or a small piece of wire into the top of the mask. And then when you put that on, you can kind of fit it down around over your nose and um, in top of your cheekbones, right? Alternatively, um, you can, if, you, if your mask doesn't have that kind of seal, you can also try wearing the mask up a little bit higher on the bridge of your nose, right? So instead of having the mask just kind of here over the end of your nose, moving this up to the top of um, the bridge of your nose, kind of squish it down against your face and then use your glasses on top of that, rest them on top of the top of the mask and then kind of hold, um, hold the top of the mask down so that it's not that you've got this thing that's kind of flapping open and you have hot air coming up, um, hot humid air coming up and fogging your glasses, right? Okay, that's our show to, for tonight. Um, tomorrow night, we're gonna continue with some more tips about how to adapt to our new normal. Um, these are strange times, but we are all in this together. So stay safe, take care of each other, and I'll see y'all back here tomorrow on Corona Chat.